Well, thanks for uh, coming out here to cover us, guys. Um, had plenty of opportunities to, to win the game. We, we have to coach better. We have to play better. And I know that sounds like every coach who loses a game, but it's the reality of it. And not just today, right, because it doesn't just happen today. It's, it's all week long, the little things. Where do you find the inches? You got to search for the inches everywhere. And uh, haven't had this feeling since Thanksgiving weekend. And it's uh, guys in that locker room are hurting. But I'm proud of the, how hard they played. I'm proud of how smart they played. We just didn't play well enough to win this game. So we'll get on a plane, go home, and get back to work and figure it out. Questions? Great. It looked like Kyle broke the plane on that first and goal from the one yard line. That obviously, they called him short. Uh, what was your vantage point, and why didn't you call timeout and challenge the play? Well, I asked them. You know, they challenge. You know, contrary to most people's belief, they 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 review every play. And I said to him, "Why isn't that a touchdown?" He said, "They they they watched it. It's not. So I'm not going to waste the timeout in the second half if they tell me it's not a touchdown. I mean, that's." I've watched it since. Did you think it was a touchdown? I'm not getting into that. Uh, you were talking about the feeling. You haven't had this feeling since you know last year. What's your just your general feeling? Do you feel like your team beat beat itself today? A little no, excuse. No, I don't feel we beat ourselves. I think that was everything it was uh, built up to be. It's an old-fashioned Big Ten slugfest. Two teams played really hard. We made a couple mistakes in the first half that I think hurt us defensively. Second half, that's the defensive football team I know. I mean, they were suffocating. So we, we got plenty of stuff to build on. Uh, it's just stinks because stinks you got to do it from the L column. You know, we've been able to do it from the W as of late, but not going to stop this crew. It's not going to stop this staff. That's what we do. You know, chopping isn't just when you win, guys. The thing I was excited about is I got to see some really young guys that were forced into action, and they played really well. You know, K.J. Duff, Ben Black, Kaj Sanders, Bo Masco, and, and a guy like Al Shadi Salam, who we moved over to DB in the bowl prep, he went out and played. He played in the Big Ten game, a lot of snaps. So we're, we're building depth. We're getting better. But today it wasn't good enough, which really, really hurts. Greg, I think you had uh, nine possessions inside – the 50 of your first 10, just how disappointed it is to only have seven points on the scoreboard to show for that. Yeah, I, well, you know, disappointed for sure. Um, and tip my hat to Nebraska's defense. I thought they they played really well. I mean, there's always a, there's always a counter force. You know, it's, it's not, you know, I don't think we made huge mistakes that cost, I think they, they, it's a good defense, They're very big and strong. You know, we miss Brian Felter, but having said that, I was really proud of Taj White. He stepped in there, having not really played any substantial time in the Big Ten, and went in there and battled every single play. I mean, that's, that's going from zero to every play in, in, in one of the best five D lines, or at least interior D lines in America. Those guys are strong, big, and tough. So. I guess a couple follow-ups. One, do you regret, in hindsight, not challenging that play? I asked them. They told me. I mean, I'm not going to – would you use a timeout? Like, think about it for a minute. You say – and they said, no, we watched it. It's not a touchdown. I'm not going to burn a timeout in the second half on doing something that – got to trust what they see, right? I mean, they're the ones making the decision. There were some other things we could talk about too. But, look, I always say this. We have one of the, the best head of officials – you know, I, I've – been through a lot of them over my years. Bill Carroll does a great job. He and I will talk. I'm going to ask questions. He's going to have answers. That's the way it works. But, you know, I made mistakes today. The players did. Other coaches did. And everybody makes mistakes. I don't, you know, who's perfect? So, But I did ask, and I was told that it was. So that's why I didn't challenge it. It's not the NFL where you throw a flag and, you know, you have to. They, they review every single play. And now it's even more proficient because it's back in Chicago and it's the same people every week doing the reviewing. You know, you're not at the whim of whoever happens to be at the stadium that day. So 
Yep. Can you uh, take us through the thought process of going through that, that fake field goal in the, the first quarter? Yeah. Um, we didn't do it exactly right. So I'm not going to get into specifics because it'll give away a competitive advantage. But, yeah, we, we, we didn't do it right. Overall, how did you feel about Ethan today? I'm proud of Ethan. I, you know, there was one throw that I'm sure he wants back. But he got hit today by some really big men, strong men, and he kept getting up, answering the bell. You know, some of those deep balls he threw were really, really good balls. Um, all the way right to the last drive, he hits Kenny on the fourth down. I mean, it is, he's a competitor, and he'll, he'll be back. Uh, just given the windy conditions and uh, kicking special teams, all that factoring in, um, what, what distance did you feel comfortable sending Jay Patel out for a kick today? And did that kind of factor into anything with the fake? No, I mean, we went out and we tried a 52-yarder, and he had plenty of distance. It hit at least a quarter way up the pipe. So he had a wind behind him, and that really didn't come into play. I think, I think more that came into play is, as Steve had talked about, we had opportunities inside and hadn't scored, and then we needed to score touchdowns, right? I mean, the way you look at a game as a coach is how many, how many possessions are left. <clears throat> And we're down two scores, and there's not a lot of possessions left, right? So it's, uh, you know, nobody's always right, that's for sure. But you got about 16 seconds to make the call. And I don't, like some people, you know, live and just keep rehashing it. You make the best call you can with the information you have at that moment, and you move on. Don't, 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 don't get into it more than that. You got to move on, right? And there's a bunch of kids hurting in there. I'm the leader. I got to make sure we get them to that plane. We get them fed. We get them hydrated. It was hot. I've not, you know, I've been doing this 37 years. I've not been in conditions like we were today. Usually, if you have a wind like that, it's a storm. It's a, some kind of hurricane or tropical storm. Dry heat. I'm proud of our trainers and our, our sports science people, our strength coaches. We didn't have one guy cramp, which is huge in, a, in an environment like that. Dry heat. So I, I don't know. Very disappointed. But uh, I love our team, I love our staff, and we got to get ready because this is the Big Ten, and in comes Wisco, and they're they're good and they're big. And somebody told me they had a big victory today, so no nobody's gonna feel sorry for Rutgers. Thank you guys.